What we're going to be looking at here are convertible bonds versus convertible preferred stock and we're going to be calculating the basic earnings per share here versus the diluted earnings per share here for both the convertible bonds and the convertible preferred stock to make the comparison here. So we're going to be looking at two cases here. We're going to be looking at the case where we have convertible bonds here and then we're going to be looking at the case here uh, we're going to have convertible per preferred stock here for example. So for our example here, case one convertible bonds, uh, Corporation A has issued two million of a seven percent here 10-year bonds and 11x1 the first year here and they were issued at 98 or 98 percent of par at a discount here and the par value of each bond is a thousand dollars and interest is paid annually on these bonds here. In the current conversion ratio here for converting the bonds into common stock uh, currently here at the uh, year one here it's 14 to 1 here so you're going to get 14 shares of common stock here for every bond that's converted and in two years it increases the ratio increases to 18 to one here. So you're going to 18 shares of common stock for every bond. Now the bond discount and premium they're going to be amortized on a straight line basis and the shares outstanding during the year here X1 are 1 million shares of common stock. Now net income for the current year here uh, we have a three million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and we have a 35 percent tax rate. Now case two here we're going to be looking at convertible preferred stock and we're going to assume the same fa facts here as the convertible bonds just for comparison purposes to understand um, the difference here be between convertible preferred stock and convertible bonds here when you're uh, trying to determine your uh, diluted earnings per share and also the basic earnings per share. Okay, so let's go over here and let's start with our earnings per share here for convertible bonds and this is we're going to be looking at the end of year one here 1231x1. Okay, so our general equation here our diluted earnings per share here when we're dealing with bonds is we're going to have our net income here and this is going to include the income here after the uh, interest expense on the bonds and what we are doing here we're going to be converting these bonds into common stock and we're going to have to add back the interest expense on those bonds but that uh, the bond interest expense is going to be added back net of the taxes here and then uh, again we're going to have the shares outstanding here in common stock and then we're going to have to add to it the number of shares here that are converted here when we convert those bonds to common stock and again let's assume our conversion here to common stock at the date when they're issued here, the when the bonds were issued here on 11x1 here. Uh, there. Okay, so let's start here with our first our diluted earnings per share here for common stock. And this is where the bonds are converted into common stock. So what we have to deal with is that uh, a bond interest expense here. So we're, what we're going to do here, let's, this is where we're going to have to add back the interest expense after the taxes. So this is our our calculation here that we'd normally go through. So we take our net income here after tax, the basic earnings, and that we had at three million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now that amount here included that dividend expense on those bonds here. And since we're going to be converting those bonds into common stock at the beginning of the year, it we're going to have to back that interest expense out because it's not going to be included here for uh, what we have to calculate it for our diluted earnings per share. And again, going down here, this is where the net income after tax we're going to have to calculate it for the diluted earnings per share here. Okay, so this is our we have a we have our bond interest expense here and we're going to also have some discount that we have to amortize on those bonds. Okay, so adding back our interest on our bonds net of taxes. So we have our bonds here, we had 2 million of them here, 7% interest rate and they're sitting out here for 1 year. So 1 year's interest here $140,000. Now for our discount that we have to amortize, it was issued at 98 here or 98 uh, 98%, so we have a 2% discount that we have to take care of on that and that's in extra expense. Remember discounts uh, add to the expense uh, on the bond, our interest expense. So we have two million here times at two percent here and then it's amortized over ten years here. So one-tenth of that amount here for the discount uh, would give us four thousand dollars here of uh, interest expense. So this was our cash amount up here and this is our discount that we're amortizing here. So our total bond interest expense was 
$144,000. Now, we have to take it less the income tax that was uh, deducted on these bonds or the income tax paid here. So 35% uh, tax rate times $144,000 going to give us $50,400. Subtract that here and net, our, net out our taxes. And we're going to come up with the net tax interest expense on those um, bonds here, $93,600. Now, this is where we're going to have to add it to the basic earnings here, net income after tax of $3,750,000. So now we get our uh, net income here after tax, the diluted earnings here, three million eight hundred and forty-three thousand. So that in uh, that is backing out the interest expense on those bonds since the bonds were converted on into common stock at the beginning of the year. So we are not we're, we have to back that interest expense out after tax. Okay, so we could this is our general formula that we went through here. Now we can use a shortcut here for this. Uh, well, this is the general formula that you would use here. Uh, you would take um, your net or your dilute or your net income for your basic earnings here that we had at three million seven hundred fifty thousand. Then we have to add back that interest here, net of tax. So our total interest here was one hundred forty-four thousand with the discount here. Now we take that times one minus the tax rate. Our tax rate was 35%, and what would that be? 65% times that here. But the numerator here of our our net income here, basic net income, our basic earnings here, plus the adding back our interest expense, that would really equate to what we uh, what we came up here with here, net income after tax with our diluted earnings at what we have here. So this is really the definition or the sh shortcut that we would do here. But then we have to divide it by the shares outstanding. So in this case, we had those 1 million shares outstanding here. But we have, since those bonds were converted into common stock, we have to take care of that conversion here. So we're going to come up with 36,000. So let's figure out how we did that. We have a 2 million bonds, $1,000 per bond. Divide that out, take it times 18 shares here, and we're going to get 8 36,000. So why are we using the 18 shares here as our conversion ratio here? So current year here was uh, X1 here was 14 to 1. So we're really working with the current year here, uh, year X1 here, but we're jumping ahead here two years down the road here and we're going to use the conversion ratio here of 18 to 1. The reason we're using that here is it's a known uh, conversion ratio here and when you're using this dilutive earnings per share here you have to use the most dilutive um, ratio that we have and that's more uh, that adds more stock here or issues more stock for the bonds that are converted so that's the most dilutive amount here and that's what we have to use here in our calculating our diluted earnings per share so here we're sitting 1 million plus the 36,000 for the bonds converted into common stock and then taking our numerator amount that we have up here and we're going to come up with a diluted earnings per share here of $3.71 per share. Just remember here when you're using this, uh, and the, you, when you have the different conversion ratios, uh, even though we're looking at the current year here, you have to use the most diluted one that you know of here. So that's what you have to use. Okay, so that takes care of our diluted earnings per share here where we we uh, converted the bonds here into common stock. Now let's look at the basic earnings per share here for this common uh, for our bonds here. This is uh, basic earnings per share for common stock. This is where the bonds are not converted into common stock. Again, in this case, we're going to use the net income after tax here for the basic earnings that three million seven hundred fifty thousand because. The bonds aren't converted, we're, and that includes the interest expense on those bonds here. So that is that we would use here. You just use the uh, your basic earnings or your net income here for an after tax for your basic earnings here, and then divide it by the shares that are outstanding. None of them were converted, so we just had that one million shares outstanding. So here's where we come with our basic earnings per share here, three dollars and seventy-five cents per share. Just remember here, basic earnings doesn't um, the, where these are where the not bonds are not converted, so we don't have any increase here in our denominator. There's no increase in the number of common stock shares outstanding, and and then in our numerator here, we didn't have to deal. There was the interest would be included here, uh, reducing our net income, our net income here by the amount of interest paid on those bonds here. But 
since there's no conversion, we have to include the interest expense. We just use, just remember, use your basic earnings, your net income uh, for the basic earnings that we have. Okay, so that takes care of our earnings per share here for convertible bonds here, both the basic and the dilutive. Okay, so now let's go and make the comparison here. Here's where we're going to be looking at the earnings per share here for preferred stock. Again, at the end of the year here, 1231x1. And this is our general formula here. We're using our net income here, but with, when you're working with preferred, uh, a preferred stock, you're going to have a dividend here, and you would have to reduce your net income here by the preferred stock dividend. And again, we're looking at diluting earnings per share here. And so we, this is what we have to concentrate on, this preferred stock dividend. Now, in our denominator, again, we're going to have the number of shares here plus the converted number of shares. But let's look at this preferred stock dividend. Well, in our example here, there's going to be a zero. The logic here is that there's going to be a zero dividend paid here because they're converted into common stock and they're converted at the beginning of the year here. So uh, you're not going to pay any dividend on your preferred stock because it's going to be sitting here at, uh, with common stock. Now, if there was some dividend that you came up with here, there wouldn't be any tax effect on it. And the reason for that here is, generally speaking, there's no tax effect. You don't have any tax effect here. Uh, we did with the interest on the bonds here, but when you're working with those dividends here for preferred stock, no tax effect regardless here. So per, that's because preferred stock dividend is not tax, tax deductible. So there's no tax deduction there included. Now, uh, so in our example here, there's no dividend paid because it was preferred stock is converted into common stock at the beginning of the period. Again, assume that the conversion to common stock at the date when it's issued here on 11x1, and we're looking at the end of the year in 1231x1 for our diluted earnings per share. Again, and just assume there was no dividends here declared on the preferred stock, and there was no, and it was non cumulative preferred stock so there was nothing sitting in a rear so we just remember take care of this preferred stock dividend if it's convert if the preferred stocks are converted into common stock then you wouldn't be paying any dividend so zero amount here okay so now let's go and look at our diluted earnings per share here for uh, common stock here for preferred where this is where the preferred uh, stock is converted into common stock here is where we're going to work with um, that in net income after tax for our basic earnings here that three million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars here there was no uh, there was no tax effect and there were no dividends paid here so from our general formula that we have up here we we're there's no increase or decreases here due to this preferred stock dividends it's just sitting here at zero but and that was our, our net income after tax basic earnings that we've been using here, three million seven hundred fifty thousand. But because the preferred stock was converted into common stock, we have a dilution, a diluted amount here, of thirty six thousand. Same as we're using the same example here. We're just as as we did with our bonds. Let's just say our preferred stock here was a thousand dollars per share. We had two million dollars worth of preferred stock outstanding, a thousand dollar par here per share. So that division times those 18 shares, that conversion ratio. Remember, we talked about our conversion ratio here. We had uh, for the current year, it was 14 to 1, but two years down the road, it was 18 to 1 here. So we have to use the most dilutive one here. Same as for the bonds here, 18 shares for, for each preferred stock converted and that works out to 36,000 here uh, share extra common stock or common stock that would be issued. So here's our dilutive effect. Uh, take your net income after tax for basic earnings and divide it by the shares outstanding plus the additional shares that were issued here in common stock when they were converted to preferred stock. Okay so Again, here we're going to come up with $3.62 per share. That's the diluted earnings per share. Now, let's look at the basic earnings here uh, per share here for common stock. This is where the preferred stock is not converted into common stock. Very simple here. We just take our, our basic earnings here, net of in, uh, 
net of our income tax here, three million seven hundred fifty thousand, and just divide it by the number of common stock shares that are outstanding. There was none converted here, so we didn't increase any of our common stock shares. One million shares here, so we come up with our basic earnings per share here at three dollars and seventy-five cents here. Okay, so let's just go back up here one more time and look at this deal here. Now remember when we were talking about our uh, uh, bonds here. Well, our bonds here uh, that were issued or we had our bonds, our convertible bonds here, The uh, we had to take care of some tax effect here. The fact that our net income here for our bonds included some taxes on those bonds and we had to come back after, on our, not to confuse things here, but on an after tax basis to take care of that added back here. But when we're dealing with our preferred stock in this case here, you uh, we have the dividends here. We're dealing with a dividend here and and it, there's no interest here. It's just a dividend that is being paid. And when we're dealing with that dividend here, there, again, there's no tax effect here because the preferred stock dividend is not tax deductible. That's in most cases here. That's the usual case. But when we did our conversion here, um, when we converted it, we did have to deal with our uh, deal, determine our number of converted shares here, plus the shares outstanding to determine our diluted earnings here per share. And that we had to deal with for both the bonds here and our preferred stock when it comes to the number of bo bonds or preferred stock that are converted into common stock. But the distinct difference here was how we dealt with that in net income here and what how we between our preferred stock and our and our uh, bonds here. Okay, so that'll end our subject here and just go through this here and get a little better understanding here between the basic earnings per share here and the diluted earnings per share.